Let's see. Am I on? Yeah. We'll, we'll start talking about some cases here. Okay. It's Saturday morning. Our brains are full. You know it's hard to sit here. Back end's getting numb. Everybody get a little snack. Do a little stretch out. Okay. And we're going to start going over some cases. And this is just going to be sit back and ask questions. I'll talk about what my thinking is. Um, I'll talk about what I learned from these individual cases and share that with you. And hopefully you'll find that helpful when you go home, whether it's a performance dog or the next dog that walks into your practice. Okay, so Ronnie is a beagle. Male, neutered. He's 18 and a half years old. He's not a performance dog, okay? At least not anymore. Um, and he came to my practice kind of on an urgent basis. He has hind limb weakness, and it was exacerbated seven days ago. He got caught under the owner's office chair. She has a home office, and he was stuck there all night, and he was splay-legged. Um, and so the problem now is that he can't walk. He has startle seizures. He has a bad seizure problem. They have them controlled, but now if you touch him or if he's in direct sunlight, he will have seizures. And so he wears these little doggles when she gets him out of the car and brings him in so that he doesn't have the direct light. I had to take him into the exam room. We had to turn off the fluorescent lights. Those will also cause seizures. I have an exam room with a window. We could have some indirect light. I'm trying to do my exam there. Okay. Um, he has been diagnosed with canine cognitive dysfunction. He has a history of cervical disc disease. He has congestive heart failure. He has enteritis. He's controlled with daily doses of metronidazole. He's had several episodes of benign idiopathic vestibular disease. He's hypothyroid. His diet consists solely of McDonald's double cheeseburgers, 99 cents a piece. She says, I just love it when I drive through and tell, tell them the drive through I need 20, you know. And they're like, oh, did we hear you right? Um, she keeps them in the freezer, warms them up. That's the only thing he will eat. She's a veterinarian. She's worked in industry. She has come to my office for one reason. She has an appointment in three hours to have Ronnie euthanized because he can't walk anymore. But somebody she works with knows me and said, you know, maybe if you're not ready, try this. And he's on these drugs. He's on zonisamide for his seizures. He's on aspirin. He gets enalapril for his heart. He's on metronidazole. He gets furosemide. He's on anapril. And this is Ronnie with his doggles. He's a cool dude. And on physical exam, we've got some pretty bad crepitus at, at, in the TL area. And he can't really walk, but if I kind of get him up and help him move a step, you can just feel it's very creaky there. He needs a lot of help getting up, very weak gait. He can only go for a few steps. He's got muscle wasting. He's very reactive to light. His pulses are thready and weak. His tongue is pale and wet. Look at all these drugs that he's on. How is that affecting his tongue? How is that affecting his pulses? Um, you know, she's going to put him to sleep, and she's another veterinarian, and am I really going to do anything? I mean, am I doing the right thing to try to do something for him? And he was born on our farm. He's 18 and a half years old, and she really wasn't good to be 19. And, you know, I, I, and I'm starting to get a little excited about Ronnie, okay? So what do you do? What would I, all I need, I only have to ask, answer one question. What would Dr. Shea do? Okay. Smile. Okay. Now, how many people, you all have had Ronnie come through your door, right? Everybody has had Ronnie come through my door. The, the most exciting part was, was the gal who sent her to me. Next time I saw her, she came in and she goes, you know, she, first thing she said when, when she came back to work, and, and we did help the dog, and I'll tell you how, how later. We'll kind of save that for the end, but that's not, really not our purpose here. Was She came in, she, she said, she has a stethoscope in an ophthalmoscope. And there weren't any candles. Like, she was so afraid of, like, somebody going to somebody who does acupuncture. They won't do any Western medicine. It's just going to be this voodoo and there just be candles lit all over. And it's like, I won her over because I did a physical exam on her dog and I didn't have any candles burning. I still kind of think maybe I should get some candles. But, you know, I can do a one Ronnie a day. That's okay. But I cannot see ten Ronnies a day. They're complicated cases. And oftentimes that, that's what we get. Okay? My passion is I want to see the young dog who hasn't gotten to the Ronnie stage yet. 
I want to be able to intercede before we have seizures, before we're so spleen deficient, before we have the horrible neck pain. I want to be able to intercede there. And it's hard to get a client who's got a busy life and four kids and the dog runs around the backyard to bring their dog in for kind of that wellness exam. Let's see if there are any issues here. But your performance people want their dog in top shape. If you can find, identify, and fix those subtle problems, they will continue to bring the dog back on a, a basis regular enough that you can foresee and prevent these kind of problems from happening. They will continue to age, but they will age much more gracefully. So let's start with our first performance dog case here. And Max is a standard poodle. He is four years old and he is doing agility. He was doing agility and he fell off the dog walk. Running down the dog walk, he fell. He fell onto his left shoulder. He fractured his left uh, front toe. He's been treated with Duramax. He's had some chiropractic. He's had some acupuncture once a week for a while. It's three months later. His foot's healed on x-ray. He can't compete. He keeps popping out of the weave poles. He keeps dropping bars. So the weave poles, remember that border collie that was just weaving through? He can start, but he but he pops out of them, okay? And he's dropping bars, so, so he's not able to clear the jumps all the way always. He tends to bring some of them down. And so she's brought him to me because he's, he's only four years old. I mean, he's a healthy dog. They can't find any more problem. He's healed up. It's not getting fixed. He's with acupuncture and with chiropractic. Can, can I fix it? Maybe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Pat can fix it. She's driven four hours to see me. Don't panic, Pat. <laughs> what would Dr. Shea do? Okay. Why can I do something different and all of you can do something different than has been done before? Because we just learned how to do the proper physical exam. We need to know where the problem is if we're going to fix the problem. Okay? So when I do that exam and I go through all that bending that we just spent an hour learning how to do that exam with the dog, what I find is this dog cannot extend the right shoulder. Left shoulder, that's where the problem was. That's what's being worked on. Fine. We can't extend the right shoulder. We actually have a little bit of muscle wasting in the right shoulder. A little bit of pain at the lumbosacral junction. So why weren't they fixing the problem? They're working on the wrong, yeah, they're working in the wrong place. So you have to be able to identify it in the dog. And this will help you identify it in the dog. So we did some acupuncture for the right shoulder. And this dog is very wood. Like, you could put any needle in him. He just stands there. He put the needles in. You know, what I didn't realize is he had his own private agenda. So I'm sticking him in. The second I get the last needle in and I stand up, he grabs a needle out of L11 and, eat, and swallows it. He just starts grabbing him out like that. It's the only dog I've ever had that ate a needle. You know, I'm getting a little excited again. Okay. <laughs> what am I going to do now? Okay. What would Dr. say? So... <laughs> I explain, you know, we can x-ray him, we can try an endoscopy, we can feed him a couple pieces of bread to coat the needle, and it's probably going to go on out. And very nice lady, she says, you know, I'm not that worried about it. Feed him some bread, went on through, no problem. Okay, the bread kind of coats it and went on through. Don't ever want it to happen again, but happen, a, a catastrophe averted. Uh, taught her how to do some of the stretching exercises. The stretching exercise I have her do is the one that I just showed you straight out and cross over. And, and I always, always, always emphasize, do not force it. We've got a muscle that's angry and sore. Okay? We've got a channel along the body that's angry and sore. If we force it, will we make it less angry and sore? No. If we're gentle, it's like yoga. Only do what you can do easily. Don't force it. Are you going to make it angry? And we'll, we will aggravate the problem. So we're going to do these stretching exercises. We're going to leash walk. She's a wonderfully dedicated client. Yes, ma'am. How long? How far? She leash walks this dog a mile every day. We got him up to two miles. He's not overtly lame. I mean, we're able to build up the muscle again in that shoulder. But it's not because he's out running around with his buddies. It's because she's leash walking. I don't want him body slamming and hurting that shoulder again. And slowly return to agility practice. So... Two months later, she's been doing a little bit of training with this dog, and he's doing quite a bit better, but she brought him back to me because in doing her stretching, she noticed that we had in, uh, decreased extension on the right front. Okay? 
So she now knows when to bring him to me with a subclinical problem. That's great, because now I don't have to wait till he's lame. This time we used a muzzle when we did acupuncture. <laughs> Please don't eat my knee.